Hey everybody, I wanted to take some time today to introduce a project that I've been working on that's getting close to being ready for prime time. I'm probably showing this a little bit prematurely, but uh, I wanted to get uh, feedback from people, see if people uh, think that it's a neat tool that they might use and is, is worth pursuing or not, uh, or if people want to contribute with the project. This is a, a software tool to assist in game design, and um, my plan is to make it open source and uh, just post it up. On, on GitHub or wherever so people can just download it. Um, I mean, ultimately I'd love to be able to change it to, right now it's a Windows desktop application, but change it so that it could run on the web uh, as well so people can use it as a tool. Um, so this is called MCDI, M-Z-D-I-E, which stands for Monte Carlo Dice Information Explorer. Uh, and that uh, really hokey uh, <laughs> name is, uh, is, is, it does, does say what it does. So basically what, what McDie allows you to do is use a graphical interface to create a series of nodes that do different things and tie them together um, to simulate different dice mechanics in games. Um, so that's the first step is dice. Ultimately, I plan to expand it to cards as well. Um, uh, and um, I've, I personally have found it pretty useful for just kind of messing around with different mechanisms and, you know, trying different things and, and, and seeing how it works. Um, and I'm, like I said, curious to get some feedback. So the idea is to make this accessible to the non-programmer. You'll see that it's, it's really completely um, graphical uh, so that you don't have to do any scripting and things like any dice. And there's other programs out there that kind of do some of the stuff that McDie does, but uh, it doesn't, um, uh, you don't need any, uh, any, any programming or typing skills at all. It's just uh, all dragging and dropping. So this is the basic window here. And I'm going to start with a really, really simple example. Um, and the whole system is built around these nodes. So you can see here, this is the current node library. Nodes are really easy to add. I've got a list of like 15 other nodes that are on the, the list to be created. Um, so I'm going to start with just a number die node. And this is just your basic die numbered from one to n. So right now I see that six there. That means that this is a d6. So I'm going to take one d6. I'm uh, going to create another d6. Um, and I'm going to compare them. So I'm going to create, there's a whole thing called output nodes. Um, and ultimately, in order to see something, you've, you, your results of all your calculations and the dice and what's happening, you've got to put them into an output node, which is going to interpret the dice in different ways. So I'm just going to do what's called a compare histogram here. Um, and you'll see all nodes have a couple of different things. So there's input nodes. Of course, there's names, which you can change. Then there's output nodes, which are on this side. That's what come out. And then input nodes, which are on this side, which is what comes in. So here we've got, this is a number D means this is a number die. So I'm going to put that into my A input. And this is going to go into my B input. And once you have it set, you can also, you know, drag things around and make it look nice and pretty. And then I just hit this execute bottom button down here. And it runs my simulation 10,000 times, rolling dice and comparing them and telling me is A higher, is B higher, or are they tied? And this is the histogram over on the side here. So here we see 41% of the time A is higher, 41% of the time B is higher, and 16% um, they are tied, which is makes perfect sense. Um, so that's the basic core is, is just putting these nodes together and, and tying, them, uh, tying them together like that. So let's delete some of these here. So um, I'm going to do another type of thing, which might be a little bit more interesting, is I'm going to create a pool of dice, a uh, number die pool. Okay. Now, the pool of dice has now two inputs and one output. The inputs are a, a, a die, which is sort of the prototype die that comes into it. Um, the quantity of dice, and for that, I'm going to need to create an integer to tie into it. Let's say we want 4d6. Okay, we'll put that there. And then this is a pool that comes out. And let's say I want to add those together. So we create a pool sum. So I'm going to add together all the dice in the pool, and then I want to plot that. So that's a basic uh, histogram plot. Okay. So now 4d6, adding them together, and there's my nice happy bell curve. And you can hover over each one it shows you. Now this is showing you that the instance of exactly equal to certain values. Let's say I'm interested in um, uh, at least rolling it. Like, like what are the chances of rolling at least a three is gonna be close to 100%, right? Or four with 4d6. But what's the chance of rolling like at least a 15? Um, so in that case, I'm gonna do what's called a greater than or equal to histogram. And I can do multiple things. So I can take the same pool sum and tie that into there. 
And then when I do it, here's my other histogram die here, which is, and the other one here, which is a greater than or equal to a histogram. So this one shows, um, okay, that seems to be backwards. The name's gonna be messed up. So you can see there's a small chance of rolling, um, uh, you know, so this is, this is less than equal to. So less than equal to a, a four, there's a very low chance. When you start getting up here, like a 12, um, it's uh, a 34%. Okay, for example. And so you can kind of see how that all accumulates and, and where it ends up. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can rename these and then it'll show up on your, your grids whenever you were to do it. So like we could call this so at least or at most X. Okay. So uh, we can do other kinds of things in here. Um, for example, I could add in uh, before I take the sum of the pool, get rid of this connection. Right, let's say I want to, I'm rolling 4d6 and I want to take out the highest, the lowest die. Let's say I take out the lowest die, right? So that's a filter node, remove lowest. Okay, and now I come from the pool into remove lowest and remove lowest. After I remove the lowest die, then I add them together. Okay. Okay, now you can see I remove the lowest. You can see how the curve is skewed over and you can get a feel for exactly what that's going to, to do to the overall probabilities. Okay. Now, in addition to remove lowest, there's also um, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, other types of fun nodes that you can play with. Um, I'm going to play with one... Um, start getting rid of some of these nodes here, called uh, Explode. Um, exploding Dice is one of my favorite mechanics. Um, so what Exploding Dice does is um, it takes a pool of dice, and then you can give it a value. And then any val any dice that are rolled that are equal to or higher that than that value, um, you roll another die. So right now I've set it at a six. So I'm going to roll four d6s. Every time I roll a six, I'm going to roll another die. And now let's say the question I'm interested in here is how many times, get rid of this, how many times do I roll, uh, how many sixes do I end up with on average? Now, if I was just rolling four D sixes just normally, I would figure maybe I'm gonna get one or two sixes maybe, probably less than one on average. But with the exploding, how's that gonna skew things? What's the, the most I can expect that somebody's gonna get? Um, so in this case, I wanna create a node called uh, count. Um, count equal. So count equal is looking for a specific dice. So in this case, I'm going to bring the pool in here and I'm going to take this same six. I'm going to say, I want to count sixes. Okay. So now this is showing me how many sixes have I rolled with my exploding dice. So here again, it's 48% um, chance of rolling zero. 32% chance of rolling one and so on, even out to a five, I've got a really tiny, tiny little chance, a 0.3% chance of getting five sixes with rolling four dice and then exploding my sixes. Um, and it, it theoretically could be infinite, but again, I'm doing, oh, this actually got six a couple of times, 0.15% chance. So as a Monte Carlo simulation, you can kind of see how it how it goes out and, uh, uh, and, and expands. Um, so, Let's say I'm looking at this, okay, I'm rolling four D6 and I'm getting sixes. How does that compare with say, um, let's say I've got another pool where I wanna roll, um, I, I, I am rolling instead, um, uh, let's say 60, let's say 60 sixes, I'm gonna put in another pool. Okay, so I'm gonna put this die here. Uh, I'm going to make it actually five. So I'm going to create integer node. So now this is not an obvious answer to me. Like if I'm rolling four dice with exploding sixes versus five dice with not exploding sixes, right? Which one is going to, am I going to get more hits on? Um, so I'm going to create again, account equal. Okay. And same thing. I'm going to count sixes. And I'm um, gonna create, in this time, we're gonna get rid of this histogram. I guess I can still leave it there, but I'm gonna do a compare histogram. Which is the one we started with at the very beginning. So I'm bringing in this here, and I'm bringing in this here. And I'm asking it, which is bigger? You know, the number of sixes in my 
a pool of four exploded dice or five non-exploded dice. And boom, there it is. Okay, so 36% of the time, my five uh, dice pool wins. The exploding dice pool only wins 29% of the time, and it's tied 34% of the time. So that's a real big edge now to the uh, to to my um, uh, five dice versus four dice pool. Um, but let's say eh, sixes are higher, eight-sided dice exploding the sixes. That's going to be a little crazy. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to say eight-sided. Well, that's going to be looking for exactly sixes, so it's not going to make any sense. Point being, so I hope you can start to see some of the power that you have of all of these with these different nodes. And we've got nodes where you can, you know, remove highest dice, remove lowest dice, extract different dice. Um, there's going to be nodes for detecting sequences, for looking at doubles and triples in numbers. Um, you can put in symbol dice. That's a whole other system that I won't have time to go into now where you can define symbols. Like I could have a die and say there's two swords on this side and one sword on this side and three shields on this side or whatever. And then you can roll off and say sword symbols versus shield symbols. How do those compare? Um, so like I said, I've been messing around with a lot of different stuff in here and I think it's it's fun to play with and it's giving me ideas for different ways of using dice and combining dice. You can merge pools of different size dice. If I've got four-sided dice and six-sided dice and eight-sided dice that are exploding or you, you, you drop lowest or pick medians and stuff like that, what does that do for you? Um, so just having these different tools available, I think is pretty cool. Anyway, um, just wanted to, you know, give a quick demo of that. I hope that this gives you flavor. Feel free to, uh, you know, drop me a line and ask questions. Um, if you want to get a copy of the source code, um, it's running in uh, Visual Studio 2019. So you can get the community edition of that and mess around with it yourself if you would like to. My plan is ultimately, as I said, to post this and make it open source so people can get, uh, just download the program for free and also get access to the source code and mess around with it themselves. So thanks for watching and uh, look forward to hearing what you think.